in a few short weeks, we will be on the Bluffton campus. And that is something that is incredible and will be so much fun to celebrate. Um, as we're there, the, the space will continue to be full of energy as our students do that day in and day out. And as they move throughout our school, they will have so many new opportunities for them that we just don't have here right now. They'll be able to work more collaboratively in our open learning commons. They'll be able to even work on their communication skills in small group rooms. Um, throughout this time, we've been able to partner with so many incredible people. Uh, our school is uh, one of over 250 schools that has been designed for this specific purpose and in uh, schools that are, are created in 50 or more countries throughout the world. And it is incredible, it is humbling, and it is so exciting to be a part of this process. Well, at Hiltonet Christian Academy, uh, we feel that if we are designing something for the next 20, 30 years, we need to be definitely looking ahead and not looking behind. And maybe even going into territory that might seem uncomfortable at first, but really is what our children really need. Our, our designs really free kids to be more successful. It's all about understanding, teaching, learning, and the spaces that support that. Rather than a fear about hanging on to doing things the way they're doing with uh, what we call bells and cells, a series of cla uh, cell-like classrooms and corridors, the school has been very open to saying, how can we do better? In fact, how can we be a global exemplar? How can we change and grow and really support our kids for the future rather than design for what we're comfortable with now? So we are now at the Academy of the Holy Names in Tampa, a hundred-year-old school that decided to change its education model. This used to be a school that had uh, typical classrooms and corridors, and this building, in fact, was designed in that manner. And as you can see, it's been completely transformed. So while Hilton Christian Academy may not look exactly like this, it's an example of what can happen with a Christian school when they decide to push the boundaries of innovation. Okay, you can see this is a very technology-rich environment, but at the same time it's a very social place where students can work independently, they can work in small groups, they can work in fairly large groups, and the teacher circulates around the room giving assistance as needed. It's working beautifully for our kids, first of all. They love the space. Uh, and the teachers have, uh, have embraced it as well. It's a sense of pride in what they're doing. And I feel like it kind of takes, especially in the middle school age, it kind of takes away that us versus them. We work together. And being a mentor rather than an authority figure, I think that it's, um, it's a much more comfortable atmosphere so that the kids can take risks and not feel like they're going to fail. Um, we're there to support them the whole way. We're there to make the mistakes with them, to show them that that's okay because we're trying something new. If you look at research on the brain, if there are just a few really critical things about learning, one is to feel safe, another is to have a stimulus-rich environment. So if you look behind me, you see what might look like a library, but really what it is, is it's, uh, it's uh, decentralized. Uh, it's not a central library in the traditional sense, so students can come, they can get access to these resources, but it's also a common space. Complementary kinds of acoustical treatments, complementary kinds of lighting makes it more stimulus rich, and thus that's the why that we do that to improve learning. Now, traditionally, people might think in a space like this there'd be a lot of noise and distraction, but you can see a lot of acoustic treatments. So even though we don't have walls, you can have different groups of students, some here, some here in the, in the more casual area, and then there's a, what we call the cave space where students can sit in a campfire type arrangement, and then we have a whole other section on the other end. So you can have two or three teachers here at the same time, and there's no acoustic problem because for the most part, students are doing the work, teachers aren't lecturing. So now we have a series of learning studios um, with a central common space that students can break out into so that when they are again moving from a direct instruction model which happens in the sort of classroom type space to a student directed model, then all of these doors can open up. The, the key is that once the direct instruction is over in that space, the students can spill out into this common space. And in the common space, you can see some high cha chairs and as well as low tables. 
The reason is at the high chairs, teachers can actually just stand next to a student and give them help as needed and then move on. We have a digital media commons. It's a bit more connection to the rest of the world and technology. A teacher collaboration room, uh, which is right open to the learning commons with a learning porch here and a learning porch here. Uh, and now we've added this active critique suite and maker space and STEM focus, which is really getting at that complex problem solving and that cycle of creating in a prototyping lab, for example, in a maker space, critiquing, and uh, also the research involved in a digital media space. So if you look at the space here to my right, this is the teacher workroom. And what we do is we give teachers a professional place to work from. And so rather than owning their own classrooms, they own the whole learning community, and then they have their own professional workspace. And the great thing with this is that teachers now get to work with each other. So they can design interdisciplinary courses, for example, which they might not have been able to do had they been trapped in their own classrooms. So when we started out, we were really afraid that the kids would not be able to work in an open environment. Um, we were worried about the kids that f feel like they get distracted easily. Um, we were worried about kids that just could not stay on task, that didn't have the self-control to stay on task. And what we have found was the more we pulled back, the more they came together. We have just been, every single day, just thrilled. We walk through here and I walk in and my lights turn on by themselves and every morning I just feel that wah, because I walk into my lab and it's just such a different feeling and the kids are really, really rising to the occasion. The places that students occupy uh, tells a lot about what we think education should be all about. And so what we try to do is to sort of walk the walk and not just talk the talk. Tell students that we care about them and give them spaces that actually show them that we care about them as opposed to sticking them in classrooms and then telling them we care about them. What really sets us apart is our teachers. Um, and uh, not too long ago we changed our verbiage from teacher to mentor because that's what we do here. We mentor and uh, a mentorship is a relationship that goes on and on and even post high school uh, as students go off to college or they go off into the, the different uh, opportunities that they have within their life and their journey and then they come back. And so what sets us apart are our people and that's all over our entire campus. It is a true relational driven school. Middle school life and opportunities that they have here in middle school I think are incredible. Um, some things that I wish I would have had when I was in middle school. We have the academics for sure, we have the mentors for sure, we have the opportunity to play so many different athletics uh, from sixth all the way through eighth grade and then we have the arts and uh, I feel within our arts and athletics we have a, a true balance between the opportunities that we have both in the arts and in the athletics. Um, every year matters in middle school is something that we say and it truly does and so giving them the opportunities that they need to have to express themselves, to grow, to fail, to, to celebrate great achievements is, is such a big deal in middle school and so we want to make sure that we provide those things for our students. One of the things that excites me the most about sixth grade is the opportunity for, for so many students to join our middle school. Um, from fifth grade to sixth grade, the numbers that we can have go from 32 in the fifth grade all the way up to 44. So it's one of the greatest opportunities for students to join our middle school. Um, we welcome them, we look forward to them, uh, and they are certainly not alone as they are joining other students because everybody is new to middle school. Um, the fifth grade to sixth grade transition is different. It's one full of opportunity and it's full of partnership with our mentors and our families. Our goal is that our middle schoolers thrive here at Hillnet Christian Academy. Uh, part of that is, is being in person. We've seen how important that is to being around one another, to interacting with one another. Um, we've seen how important it is for our mentors and our students to be around each other uh, as they progress through all the classes, um, even the cafeteria, even just time being together. Uh, one of the biggest things that I'm so excited for in our middle school team is our guidance team, uh, headed up by Miss Jen Murphy. And she does an incredible job 
while helping students identify their strengths, their passions, um, even their weaknesses to, to continue to grow at those things uh, and to give them those, those lifelong opportunities. Um, and that's just such an important such an important piece and one of the things that I'm also so, so thankful for is just the the emotional well-being of our students and how she can really help them with that and that she can be there and she can be an advocate for them. One of the uh, cool things at Hillman Christian Academy is E10 uh, which stands for Eagles 10 and usually it's roughly around 10 minutes or, or 10 students this year it's a little bit different um, because we have more students, but we also have more mentors there with them. Uh, I enjoy this time. It's a little bit more casual, but it's, a, it's an opportunity to get to know our students and for them to get to know us in, in not as formal a setting as the classroom. This year it's been very exciting as we're able to do Bible, as we're able to do chapel, as we're able to do the worship, as we're able to do games, uh, and even come together in our stadium. Um, these are just some awesome things with, uh, with E10 that we're able to know our students and they're able to know us. There's so many twists and turns in the middle school life. Um, it's uh, three very, very impactful, important years. And, and at every twist and at every turn, our mentors are there for our students. And that is just something that I think is, is vital to the growth uh, at this time in their, in their lives. And in that, it can just be through a, a talk, a chat, it can be through class, um, it can be through just walking shoulder to shoulder, uh, heading somewhere, and it's so important. And throughout Hilton and Christian Academy, we come from the worldview of Christ, um, and that is to, to know Christ and to make Him known. And again, this is where we're gonna meet our students uh, day in and day out, and something that I am personally just so thankful for and blessed and humbled to be a part of. As Mr. Curtis just shared, HHCA is a very special place for middle schoolers, and we would like to help you know more. My name is Donna Wood. I'm the Director of Admissions here at HHCA. This year, due to demand, we started early. I am here to help you with any and all questions that you may have. Again, thank you for joining us, and I hope we connect.